see great matchups, but we might also see mirrors. And on the bright side, it's been a long time since I was able to see a Mordor mirror lately, especially after the changes on the version 8.4. That's the version of the patch 2.02 we are right now. Let's see. Trolls got nerfed, orcs got buffed, so we might see early on a lot of orc wars, but later on, I'm assuming we're gonna still see some of these mountain trolls. Let's see. Beautiful. At the top side, we have the purple Mordor player DG Premier from United Kingdom against the orange Mordor player Mr. Smog, who is the world champion of 2019 and managed to reach the grand finals of the world championship 2020 as well, with a great chance of winning the biggest event of the year twice. And that's really honorable, by the way, guys. If you are able to beat so many players, reach the grand finals, win the grand finals, not only one time, but two years in a row, and Mr. Smog is all about to do that, but DJ Premier is saying, no, 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 no. Last year, he was not facing against me in the grand finals. Now he has to defeat me first. Thank you guys so much for the follows. Cherry lies, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. We have two slaughterhouses into the orc pit, into the third slaughterhouse, into the second orc pit from DG Premier. On the other side, we have pretty much the same start. And Mr. Smoke is gonna even go for the Haradrim Palace right after the second orc pit. Powerpoint wise, Mr. Smoke didn't pick anything, anything just yet. He might go for the Warchant, he might go for the Eye of Sauron, which is the most common thing, I think. Just because you wanna reach the power spike with the industry from your, from your spellbook as soon as possible. On the other side, also DJ Premier didn't pick anything just yet. And guess what? DJ is also building after two orc pits his Haradrim Palace. So we might see Haradrim Lancers first. I'm assuming that's the plan because Easterlings against Mordor are only viable if he is going for Calf, like Haradrim Lancers, or if he is going for Trolls. But he's upgrading the Haradrim Palace to level 2, which costs only 450. And I'm assuming Mr. Smog does the same thing. Exactly. So it's like looking in the mirror right now. Both players are pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, Smokey is moving forward with uh, one of his orcs. Remember, orcs got buffed in the current patch 2.02 version 8.4. They deal 25% more damage, which is gonna increase their damage output not only against units, but also against the resource buildings, in this case against the slaughterhouses. So you need to be a little bit more careful now. You can't just let them touch you for free. But you could do potentially in the in the older versions of the patch 2.02 because oryx they would need a bit more time to take down your resource buildings okay so far we're gonna have oryx against oryx obviously uh, it's an even fight both are using the whole ground stance in those skirmishes uh, one of the oryx is gonna manage to get into the backside but again there are two orc pits from both the players so i think everyone should be able to defend themselves rather than palaces both of them are level two from both the players and so far, no economical damage dealt, and no one was creeping anything as well. Again, this is the map Lins of Linden, boys. We have nine different maps in the best of nine series. So if we reach all the time, you know, all the way up to the game number nine, all the games will be played on a different map. Um, I think everyone has enough experience in the map pool of the World Championship because we went through a big group stage games. Then we reached the round of 16 in the double elimination tournament we had for the World Championship. We had so many series, so many games, which was increasing the activity incredibly during the last months. And here we are now, to, you know, Mr. Smog coming from the winner bracket to the Grand Finals and DJ Premier is coming from the loser bracket to the Grand Finals and Zeta Trooper 87, guys. Unbelievable, three months in a row with tier 3 sub to the channel. This is amazing. Thank you so much and welcome back. Appreciate that so much, Zeta Trooper. Really means a lot to me. I see also a lot of new faces in the chat, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate that. We have a fight between uh, Rivendell, I mean, Radram Lancers. I of Sauron was picked from Mr. Smok, but also from DJ Premier. Two power points collected by DJ, 400 command points available. 400 command points available from Mr. Smok and almost two power points collected as well. And there, there comes Sir James D with another sub for four months now. Sir James, thank you so much for that and welcome back. Appreciate that so much. Okay, guys, beautiful. Haradrim palaces, they might be upgraded later on to level three for the Haradrim archers. That might, that might be a possibility. One of the lancers from DJ Premier has been taken down. Um, this slaughterhouse here is gonna not make it alive. Easterlings, they won't be there in time. They might still be able to take down some of these Lancers though. 
but DJ is gonna be able to take down the Slaughterhouse, but also getting a level 2 Battalion, which is gonna give this health regeneration over time, which is amazing. During all this time, also, also Mr. Smog was trying to take down successfully one of the Slaughterhouses from the start. These two are very important to keep it alive because they are all about to hit level 2, which is not gonna increase only the amount of resources you're gonna gain from the Slaughterhouses, no? But it's gonna also give you more command points. A level 1 Slaughterhouse gives you 50, a level 2, 75, and a level 3 one, even 100 command points. Uh, but Plume, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream as well. Okay, Easter links are creeping the white, uh, the work layer. Both of them at the same time. This is from DJ, this is from Mr. Smuck. So it's like looking in the mirror, guys. They are doing pretty much exactly the same thing. We will need to wait until something different happens, uh, which can, you know, change the outcome of the game. But so far, it is kind of back and forth game. Nothing is decided just yet. This game might last longer. Warchan has been used from DJ offensively. Mr. Smog has not the power points just yet he needs for the war chant. He might also go for the Tainted Land, or he can skip both of these and try to save for 10 for the Industry Power Spike. But without the buff and Eye of Sauron being on, on cooldown, he will struggle defending such an attack. He might not lose any of these slaughterhouses, but he will definitely end up losing plenty of units here. Also, the Lancers from DJ Premier around. There is a huge army. That's what we like to see in a Mordor Mirror. Now Smog has enough power points to go for the Warchan or Tainted Land himself. There was a bad trample, there are just too many orcs. Eye of Sauron will be used from both the players, that means for DJ, his units are double buffed. Why? Because Eye of Sauron is a leadership and Warchan is a buff, those two abilities are able to stack in Rise of the Witch King. Aggressive Panda, thank you so much for the Prime as well. We got just the hype train guys, that is amazing, thank you guys so much for that. Appreciate that so much. The Kaiser, thank you so much for the follow as well. Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Alright, in the meantime, Smoke is also creeping the troll layer at the top left side. We have a fight again, like I said before, the, uh, you know, Mr. Smoke was able to defend himself, which is really important. He will lose one of the slaughterhouses though, but he didn't go for the Warchan himself. That means he's only two power points away from getting the industry unlocked from the spellbook. He's also building up his troll cage, uh, just like DJ Premier. So nothing too crazy is happening, but DJ has a level 3 Haradrim Palace for the Haradrim Archers, unlike Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog's Haradrim Palace is only level 2. That means DJ will now have a counter unit against the Mountain Trolls from uh, Mr. Smog. Not only that, but he's also going for the Troll Cage upgrade to level 2 for the Drama Trolls, for the constant leadership for the Haradrim Archers, but also the Fear Ability from the Roar of the Drama Troll. So we have only the troll creep at the bottom right side remaining on the field. Uh, Mr. Smog needs a bit more than one power point for the industry. He has 20, uh, 425 command points collected. His command points kept right now. Can't get any more units on the field in this very moment. On the other side, we have DJ Premier sitting on 600 command points. He has five power points collected already after the war chant and Eye of Sauron. Hi, I am Na. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream as well. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Beautiful. So, you know, I, I would say that Smok is kind of a little bit behind. He has now used the industry in front of the uh, production buildings, which might be a risky thing to do. Uh, he has a troll cage level 2 as well for the drama trolls. Um, so, you know, fear resistant for Mordor is only possible with Gothmog. So you need to get Gothmog on the field from the fortress, obviously, and get some level 5 for the fear resistant, which might be really, you know, pretty much needed against the Mordor opponent. Because Mordor, as we know, has a lot of fear with Drama Trolls Roar ability, with the Gatewatcher expansion around the fortress, with the Screech ability of the Fell Beast. So many different ways to fear your units. So fear resistance is becoming really valuable in this uh, Mordor mirror match for both the players. Haradrim Palace level 3 Haradrim Arches are gonna hit like an absolute truck against the units from Mr. Smog right now. The normal orcs, but also Easter Links, they can't handle that much damage. The drama, the drama troll from Mr. Smog might be very useful in this situation, but remember, also DJ Premier has a drama troll on the field himself. Uh, with that being said, let's see how effective this attack is going to be. He has almost collected 9 power points as well, by the way, guys, so he's also very, very close to get the industry unlocked. 650 command points, but Smog was able to catch up. He has 2 power points collected after the industry, and they have a fight now in the middle of the map. Radrim archers are off position, they need to make sure to stand behind the orcs and behind the easter links, not absorb the damage, but this way they can use the aggressive stance, 
and be the main damage dealers of the army, which is gonna be pretty much needed. The drama troll from Mr. Smog has to be careful. In this very situation, it's also very important. So right now. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much for the follow. Best fake tournament Anonymous ever. True that. $5. Welcome, a uh, generous pirate. Anonymous Best Tipper. Totally Thank you for the money, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's see what's gonna happen. Road ability is gonna be available soon. We have Eye of Sauron available from Mr. Smog, but again, Eye of Sauron plus Drama Troll leadership doesn't stack because both are leaderships. And DJ Premier has collected 10 power points, which will be invested into picking the industry from the spellbook, which is gonna be used immediately. 700 command points for DJ, 750 actually, again, 6, 550 now only. He also lost the slaughterhouse with the level 3 industry buff on it, which hurts him a lot. He's gonna go, you know, obviously he has to go for the Siege works. he has to get those catapults on the field. And that's a perfect situation for DJ, because look at the positioning of the Haradan marches. They are in the backside of the army, they are pretty much safe. The drama troll from Mr. Smoke has been taken down as well. There is obviously nothing he can do in this situation. The orcs he's getting on the field from these two orc pits are getting pretty much one-shotted the second they are entering the battlefield. Another slaughterhouse from Mr. Smoke is gonna be taken down. Not only... Is he lower on command points than his opponent, but also he has barely any units on the field. He has a level 3 Haradrim Palace now. Hinted's land will be used actually from DG Premier offensively. And Smok needs still one more power point to be able to cover the Tinted land. Until this moment, DG will have double buff because he has a Drama Troll and he has the Haradrim Arches on top of the Tinted land. So his Haradrim Arches are definitely stronger, but he has also more units, more Arches on the field than his opponent does. So it's a really, really bad and kind of sad situation for the world champion of 2019. The slaughterhouse here is going to be taken down. And, you know, look at the command points from DJ. Look how well he was able to expand during all this time. He has also Gothmog now on the field. Again, level 5 with the Iron Hand is going to do the work uh, for the Fear Resistant. But I think DJ has the momentum going now in his favor in the game number one. He's camping right in front of the production buildings of Mr. Smog. Which is the worst thing that can happen to you if you have nothing to follow up, if you have nothing to deal with the army. Maybe going for some catapult expansions around the fortress might do the trick. He has a level 2 siege works now, but he is struggling resource wise as well. Look his money. He is very very short on money. He was able to cover the tinted land now. That means the buff from DJ Premier is gone. But the Haradrim Palace level 3 from Mr. Smoke has been taken down already. And that's, that looks like a GG for me. An incredible performance, by the way, from DJ Premier in the game number one. Mordor Mirror, obviously, not the best matchup, not the most entertaining matchup in the game. But they have seen that small differences in a mirror like this can change the outcome of the game. And DJ was just a little bit faster, was a little bit better in terms of harassment, a little bit better in terms of defense. And being a little bit better can actually change, as you can see yourself, the outcome of the game dramatically within a second and a half and nice play I, there is nothing else i can say smoke is going for a desperate move he want to get those black riders on the field but look his money the black riders they cost 2000 by the way they are more expensive than some heroes of rise of the witch king but they are also stronger than many heroes of rise of the witch king smoke is gonna call it gg that's gonna be the first game which will be won by the player from United Kingdom, DJ Premier, is building oh, himself in, in the group stages, in the round of 16, quarterfinals, and even in the semifinals. But it was a gentleman's agreement for the finals from both the players to pick always random factions. Now, the world champion of 2019, who is 1-0 behind, the orange Man of the West player, Mr. Smok, gets to play the Man of the West faction against the purple Isengard player DJ Premier from UK, who is leading this series 1-0 so far with the Isengard. So good against evil, Isengard against Man of the West on the map Erin the Edit. This is the matchup, let's see who is gonna be the victor of the game number 2. We have two furnaces into the Uruk pit, into the third furnace from DJ Premier. On the other side we have an early barracks from Mr. Smok into the soldiers. He's gonna build the farm, the second farm after the barracks. And with the soldier battalion, he might go for an early harassment and try to take down one of the furnaces from his opponent, Mr. Smok. That's uh, from his opponent, DJ Premier, I mean, sorry. Or he might go for the creep as well. But if you want to go for the creep, I think uh, the right unit to start with are those Rohan Spearman units. I'm assuming he's going to go for a push instead. Because this is a very small map, I think early barracks can actually be very effective. 
And if Mr. Smog is being able to deal the damage he's looking for, it might be a great start into the game number two. So he's actually leading to this side, as you can see. He's gonna attack the furnace here. Um, and we will have Urukai start from DG Premier. So I think he's gonna potentially choose this pathway. And he won't be ready to defend such an attack. Smog is gonna get another soldier battalion on the field. I don't need to mention the fact that Urukai are stronger than soldiers in a 1v1 situation. And in a situation like this, that's a perfect situation for Mr. Smog. Why? Because he doesn't even need to use his buff here. He's gonna be able to take down the furnace for free. But he's gonna use the buff anyway. It looks like he wanna just burst it down. And because he's not demolishing the furnace, they're gonna hit level 2 after that. Which is gonna be oh, almost level 2, okay? They are not actually hitting level 2 from killing a furnace. Unlike orcs or goblins, they will need a bit more experience for that. And he might be even able to take down the second furnace in the backside. Even though DJ Premier is building one of these wall hubs in order to block some of these units. But I think if he positions himself nicely, if he clumps nicely against the furnace, he might be able to take it down. The crossbowmen, they should not be able to defend this furnace at all. The soldiers are tanky after all with the shield ball formation. Okay, Warchan has been used offensively from uh, DJ Premier. It looks like uh, Smok was able to keep this farm here alive by body blocking with, uh, you know, a lot of units, including Pikeman in the Porcupine formation. And he was able to take down two furnaces. Crossbowmen, they won't be able to finish off the soldiers, and if Mr. Smog can get away with them, that would be a win-win situation. The farm in the backside has been taken down. The Urukai are level two now. You will be surprised how longer, how you know, how much long, how much longer they can actually stall the fight here. No big deal for them. Um, they might even get level three during this fight uh, because they are still war chanted, and not only that, they are also stronger regardless of the buff or not. So buffed Urukai against non-buffed Swordsman, obviously Urukai are gonna be able to win that. Just cancel that one. I think there was a mistake from Mr. Smog to not cancel that. He might not lose it now, but it's gonna be very, very low. If you canceled it before it reaches 100%, you can get entire money back. And this way, he's just gonna lose the farm here for free. That's a really great uh, counter-attack here from DJ Premier with only one Urukai. Even though there were so many units to defend, Urukai, that's the power of them. They were able to deal still a lot of damage, taking down two farms, not only that, but also taking down an, you know, a lot of units from Mr. Smog. He was also able to creep the Warclay at the right side. Smog is gonna do the same at the left side. Powerpoint-wise, we have two powerpoints collected by Mr. Smog, 400 command points available. On the other side, we have four powerpoints collected by DJ Premier, and 400 command points available as well. Um, yeah. I think this game is looking again good so far for um, for DJ Premier. I would say in the late game, Isengard will be the better faction in terms of eco, because of the devastation, because of the lumber mills, because of the fuel the fires, or even industry you can pick from the spellbook. But we should never underestimate the Men of the West faction as well. I think Men of the West faction once you have a momentum going with the Gondonites, with the calf unit, you can get on the field. You can actually go for permanent harassment. Try to stall the game and then just go for like a like a classic Man of the West build. Get ranges on the field with the Boromir Horn of Gondor. Isengard will need Saruman in order to get a fear resistant against your Horn of Gondor from Boromir. And you know, Saruman costs a lot of money and getting him level 5 will also cost you a lot of time. So until this very moment, it's gonna be impossible for Isengard to get a fear resistant. Unlike good factions, evil factions can't build a statue for that. And your Horn of Gonzo long shot combination with Rangers and Boromir can actually be very deadly. Uh, Sverrein91, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream, by the way. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. And uh, Smoke is even gonna be able to creep the troll layer at the top left side with those Spearman units. They will potentially hit le uh, level 3 after that. But most importantly, they're gonna get a lot of money here from the creep. Almost level 3. The troll at the bottom right side has been taken down by. Uh, DJ Premier in the meantime, with those Uruk's, Uruk Spearman units. Warchan and Rallying Call has been used in the middle of the map. But the Gondor Knights are running it down for some reason. Only one of them is remaining. Can he get away? No, he can't. He will be taken down. The Warc Riders, though, they are just coming in time. And what a dominant fight from DJ Premier here in the middle of the map. The second Gondor Knight is doing a great job trampling down those crossbow men. But they are Warchanted and the Gondor Knights here, they are not. So they were not able to one-shot them. 
and kind of lazy from DJ Premier there. If you see that happens to you, just make sure to switch to the whole crown stance with your crossbow man. This way you can minimize the damage income from the trample from your opponent even more and they wouldn't lose that much health. But it was a great fight anyway for uh, DJ Premier and now he's pushing forward. He's gonna use the Kribane now for the debuff. The War Riders, you need to be careful. There are some Spearmen on the field you need to avoid. During all this time, the peasants here, they might be able to take down slowly but surely one of the furnaces. The builder from DJ has to be careful as well. I think the Urukai, they will be able to get that uh, to get there in time and keep this furnace alive. Uh, but he might lose the Uruk pits here. Look how many crossbowmen he has. The Lancers, uh, the Gondor Knights are pretty low. And there are some spearmen they need to avoid fighting inside the archers which is very smart nice positioning here as you can see yourself from dj premier he makes sure to keep those crossbow men protected all the time against the gondor knights oh there was a there was a really nice rebuild here which was also needed but you can see yourself the gondor knights they can't approach them and dj is coming in clutch also in the game number two boys what an incredible performance from the player from uk and being 2-0 behind is gonna put a lot of pressure on mr smug and now he has to make sure to keep winning some games and this one is gonna be very very hard to win now because he was forced to go for the rebuild he won't be able to save the barracks anyway and we have to now the white of dunland summon here from the player from uk as well and there is not enough to defend uh the builder might be taken down will be taken down everything is falling apart the level two farm is gonna be the next target and holy guacamole guys the hg premier not only was he able to perform incredibly well in the loser's bracket of the world championship after he got kicked out to the loser's brackets by imperialist in the semi-finals but he's also performing really nicely against the world champion of 2019 and gg is being called that's gonna be the game number two and dj is gonna increase his lead from 1-0 to 2-0 in the best of nine series in the grand finals boys and i think everyone was Everyone was waiting for that because everyone wanted to see uh, Mr. Smog on his main faction and he picks random and gets Isengard. He's the orange Isengard player at the top left side on the map Sakura Forest 2 against the purple model player DJ Premier from United Kingdom who is leading the best of 9 series 2-0 so far. And let's see how Smoky is gonna perform with the Isengard faction. He was able to dominate all the games so far until the finals. But he was not facing against DJ Premier just yet so far in the World Championship. Not in the winner bracket, not in the round of 16 and not in the group stages. We have two furnaces into the Uruk pit, into the third furnace from Mr. Smuck. On the other side we have two Orc pits into the Orc pit. I mean two slaughterhouses into the Orc pit, sorry. Into the third slaughterhouse. Warchan has been picked from Smoky, and Mordor player can again start with Tainted Land, Warchan or Eye of Sauron. I think all three choices are great situationally. Unlike factions like Men of the West or Elves, they have to start with the uh, with the Rallying Cold pretty much. But Mordor, every power point ability you are able to choose from the beginning, I think can be really good in like all the stages of the game. Okay, we have two Orc Pits into the third Orc Pit. Actually, he's gonna spam a lot of Orcs. Again, Orcs got buffed this patch, so it's gonna be harder for Isengard. To deal with the orcs now than it was in the version 8.3. On the other side we will have Urukai start from the Uruk pit. Um, they might go for the attack. Urukai are still stronger obviously than the orcs. They should also be able to win the... Oh his build is trapped. <laughs> his build is trapped. Oh that's unfortunate. You see that guys? There is no escape anymore. His builder is... he's now gonna be forced to demolish the orc pit or the slaughterhouse by the way. Otherwise this builder is not gonna be able to move anymore. But that's a situation that is how it is. Like, we can't make a remake because of that. Unfortunately for DJ Premier. On, on the bright side, the build is gonna be in a safe spot now. And I think he's not gonna die very quickly <laughs> before he loses the Orc Pit or the Slaughterhouse here on the backside. The Urukai, they might be... I mean, now in this situation, Mr. Smog might do a favor to DJ Premier and demolish, you know, kill one of the Slaughterhouses here, which will free the, <laughs> the builder. And I think DJ is not going to even try to defend this. He's going to give up the slaughterhouse. He will say, thank you very much, Smoky. You will just free me from the prison. He's going to use the Eye of Sauron defensively on the Orc Arches to buff their damage. 
The builder now should be able to move again. During all this time, one of the Oryx was trying to make it into the furnace here, but the crossbowmen, they were able to defend. And the Vorkpil is coming up at the same time for Mr. Smug. The Orc archers are actually dealing a great amount of damage. They might be just able to protect this Lorahos here in the backside, but remember the Urukai with the aggressive sands, they will deal a decent amount of damage. And also nice positioning here from Mr. Smog definitely, clamping quite nicely against this against the slaughterhouse here. And the Oryx, they were just not in time. And that might cost them, actually not, uh, they are dealing a lot of damage to the Urukai. It's gonna be a close one, I think. He might be able to protect this one. It would be very unfortunate if he loses that here. And he will be barely able to protect the slaughterhouse, but it's very, very low now. And the next attack from Mr. Smog is gonna definitely try to take it down. Okay, we have three Orc Pits into the Haradrim Palace now. He was only losing one of the Slaughterhouses, I think that's not the end of the world. But he was able to take down one of the Furnaces on the other side, which is really nice. And look how many Orcs now he has on the field. In a situation like this, the Warcrider Trample has to be very careful, because the, the way you want to trample the enemy units is you want to actually go for a flank damage. You don't want to ride in the middle of them. That's going to slow down your calf unit. They won't be able to escape anymore and they will take a lot of damage while they will be able to deal zero damage themselves. A lot of Oryx, but in this situation it might be quality over quantity. Uh, the Urukai, they will try to kill those Orc Arches, but nice positioning here from DJ Premier, making sure to body block the Urukai. The whole ability being used immediately, that should be just enough to take down those Oryx and this way he will make sure to not keep any, to not lose any of these furnace and keep every single one of them alive but you know at least mortal player was able to stall and actually take down even one of the urukai with the attack that's gonna you know give him some time obviously he was also able um, isengard player was also able to creep the work layer here and also this one at the left side at the left side of the river he was able to secure himself two work layers against the zero work layer so far from dg premier not only that, but he will also be able to finish off this uh, slaughterhouse. They are level 3 now. Rebane is going to be used from Isengard's player Mr. Smog to debuff the enemy units. Nice trample here. Didn't take any damage here with the Warc Riders, obviously. Another trample is incoming. Very well done here, by the way, from Mr. Smog. He will keep up the pressure now. More units are following up. You want to actually deal as much damage as possible if you have a debuff active like he does. This way you can actually make the orcs even weaker in terms of defense. So one trample is going to be more than enough to take them down. And you won't pretty much receive any kind of damage. Warchan is going to be used now. Eye of Sauron is uh, available. But there is no point of using it when the Kribane is being active. Because Kribane is not only debuffing the enemy units, no. But it's also nullifying the enemy leadership. That might be a crazy amount of damage. You should be able to deal now absolutely for free. Another slaughterhouse has been taken down. The orc pit... One of the weakest production buildings in the game, alongside with the Goblin Key from the Goblin Faction. He also lost a Builder, by the way, in front of the Fortress. The pressure is real and Moro sitting only on 350 command points now. Lost one of the Orc Pits. Four power points collected after the Eye of Sauron against the four and a half power points from Mr. Smog after Warchan and Kribane. 500-450 command points now. He lost one of the Furnaces at the, at the top right side to this Orc Battalion. But Smog is gonna retreat now. Better safe than sorry, you don't need to overcommit. Especially when your Kribane is gone. Um, just peel back, you know, don't lose too many units, keep them alive. This way you can actually, you know, maintain the pressure all the time. Um, and every time you're gonna attack, your army is gonna be bigger and bigger and bigger, which is gonna be harder for uh, DJ Premier to defend. DJ will need now a lot of time to get back into the game. The good thing for DJ is the fact that he has two level 2 slaughterhouses which are pretty much untouched and he needs to keep these alive. Which is easier said than done. But there is one thing I need to say about the army from Mr. Smog. It only includes one pikeman, which might not be enough because now DJ Premier has also Revendal Lancers. I mean, I don't know why I keep calling them Revendal Lancers, those are Haradrim Lancers obviously. But you can actually trample those Urukai here for free. They are using the whole crown stance and shield fall. They are quite tanky, they are quite tough. So you will need to trample them multiple times. The Warc Riders here will be taken down. And again, there is only one pikeman and the crossbowmen, they need to have the protection of these pikemen. Otherwise, uh, you know, the Lancers, they can be very devastating. 
And he has also Warchan now. He will have buff against non-buffed units. Also, Krivin is on cooldown from Mr. Smog still. That might be a bad fight to take. Lancers, they're gonna force a trample here, by the way. But it might be risky and it might end up being ugly for DJ Premier. Oh, he's going for it anyway. Nice trample after all, but again, he doesn't. You want you wanna be sure, you wanna make sure that you don't get slowed down during the trample. He lost a lot of these lancers. Oh, just in time, micro the round. He might be able to take down the furnace here. Smog has now his debuff ability available. He has collected seven and a half power points after that. In a situation like this, you can still go for the devastation, which gonna give you the money boost you will need. But I think he has 650 command points collected, so his resource income is looking great after all. But when he collects here around this fight, 10 power points, he can also go for the Wildman of Dunland Summon and use it in combination with the War Chant. And he's very, very close to get the power points he needs. So if he collects all the units he has on the field now and combines that with a beautiful Wildman of Dunland Summon and then War Chant everything together, he might be able to deal an incredible amount of damage not only to the economy from DG Premier, but also to the re uh, to the production buildings and take down the Haradrim Palace level 2 and all the remaining Orc Pits absolutely easy and for free. Uh, Lord Galbis, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to this stream. He's gonna use the War Chant now. Uh, there is no way he can actually, you know, defend the Slaughterhouse here. Eye of Sauron should be available by the time, but he needs to wait until the Kribian is gone. Mordo has to play a little bit more carefully now. He was using Devastation, by the way. He got a lot of money from that. You can always invest the money into Sharku or Lourdes. Both are viable options, I would say, in this matchup. Lourdes can be great with the leadership as well. Once you are level 5. Sharku is always a great choice against clumped uh, factions like Elves, but also counts against Orcs. When you spam a lot of Orcs and he gets in the middle of your army with one strike, he can actually deal massive amount of damage to you and your army. Uh, the level 2 slaughterhouse in the front side is gonna be taken down next. Lancers are looking for a trample. Nice trample, actually. Not bad at all. But just not enough. He will need multiple lancers now in this situation to deal the damage he's looking for. Smoke is gonna peel back. He might go for the creep here at the right side of the river. I mean, off the map. We have some small fights. One of the lancers was able to take down another, another furnace here from Mr. Smog. He wanna keep the pressure. He wanna actually be offensively active while he is defending himself. That's what you need to make sure uh, to actually mean. Just because defense all alone is not gonna win you the games. Um, he has a level 2 battalion and a level 1 battalion of the lancers. And, you know, you can obviously buy the, um, the banner carry upgrade from the orc pit. Orc Pit upgrade to level 2 costs only 250 anyway. But you can also buy from the level 1 Orc Pit the Banner Carry upgrade. And that only costs 400 for, uh, you know, to, to actually purchase from the Orc Pit. And this way you can make sure to upgrade your Haradrim Lancers for the self regeneration part. Um, so you can respawn over time, even if you have only one unit remaining from the battalion. The Slaughterhouse in the front side is gonna be taken down next. Warchan is gonna be used once again from DJ defensively. 800 command points for Isengard, 325 for DJ Premier. He's now being attacked from multiple sides at once. Yeah, he was using the War Chant, but the problem is there are just not enough units to deal with the army of Isengard. DG is being called, and this game is gonna be won. Um, increase his lead to 3-1, to, to or if Mr. Smog can close the gap. At the bottom side, we have the Orange Engma player Mr. Smog from Ukraine against the purple Isengard's player DJ Premier from United Kingdom. Alright, two furnaces. On the other side, we have an early Hall of the Kingsman after one mil only. Power point wise, DJ is gonna potentially start with the War Chant, and Smoke is gonna pick the War Chant already. In this map, you can also go for the, for the you, know, you know, maybe clan setting is the way to go, because the Wildman of Tunland, they should be able to match the Gundabad Warriors in a 1v1 situation. And you can also spam them. They are much more cost efficient, as we know. They cost like much less than Urukai cost. They cost only 150 each. And Urukai, they cost obviously 400 each, so they are way more expensive. Uh, because of the cost efficiency of the Wildman of Dunland, you can you can actually spam them all the time, and it doesn't hurt you that much if you lose one of these. And your opponent has to be very careful when it comes to deal with them, because he needs to make sure to demolish the mills immediately. Otherwise, he will. 
you know, not only lose a mill, but also during this time he will lose a lot of money to the pillage ability from the Waldman of Dunland units. Okay, we have um, Gundabad Warriors coming first. Uh, it's a very early Gundabad Warrior because it was a mill into the Hall of the Kingsmen. Into the second mill, now the, you know, now building up the third mill. On the other side, we will have Urukai start. Again, in a 1v1 situation, Urukai are obviously stronger than the Gundabad Warriors. But Smog can always avoid to fight them and try to take down the furnace. Smog has to be careful. I mean, there are obviously some clear advantages of the Gundabad Warriors, I mean, of the Trollmaster units from the Hall of the Kingsmen. But there are also, you know, there is also a one big, one massive disadvantage of the unit. And this is the, you know, the white unit in the backside, this one. This is a trial master unit. Once you lose him, you will lose the entire battalion. Um, and that hurts you big time. That's why you need to make sure to position yourself nicely that the trial master here is always protected. It looks like um, DJ is going to give up this furnace here for free. He might even lose the second one, by the way. Um, let's see. I mean, he might lose the second one. He didn't use the war chant. He's going to lose the trial master. Though. Look at this. Trial master is gone. The battalion is gone as well. Warchan has been used offensively, but also defensively from Mr. Smog in order to keep this mill alive. Nice body blocking here, by the way. The extroverts are doing also a great job. This mill is still remaining on the field, and he might be able to keep it alive. Because more reinforcements are gonna, you know, are gonna come out of the all of the Kingsmen, obviously. The furnace in the backside is gonna be taken down as well. I think the the you know the crossbowmen they won't be there in time. The trialmaster is protected. And the furnace, the second furnace here from DJ Premier is gonna go down. And the furnace in the front side is also pretty badly damaged. So, you know, he might finish, off, finish it off later on. Not only that, but he was also able to keep all his mills alive. That's a win-win situation, definitely. And he was also able to kill a lot of these crossbowmen, by the way. Yeah, the crossbowmen, they should be able to deal with the Trailmaster units here, after all. But they are only level 1, so they don't have the self-regeneration. And it was also giving a lot of power points to Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog looking great and strong now in the game number 4. He was also able to save one of the Gundabad warriors. That's one of the advantages of the Trailmaster units because you can see yourself. They are respawning over time. Uh, even though they are only level 1. Because the Trailmaster unit is acting like a banner carrier pretty much. We have also Wolf Riders now coming from the Trailmaster. Because he has the Troll and Wolf then up on the field. And he's gonna try to commit to the furnace now. He was able to damage before. Okay, the pikemen, they need to get in position to keep those crossbowmen alive. Extroverse are here as well. Uh, Danger, Dark, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. The furnace might not survive it. Ah, yeah, I will show the intro after this one. Don't worry, guys. Okay. Should be able to finish off the furnace, right? Because he's also Wolf Riders here doing nothing. The furnace has been taken down. EJ only on 400 command points. Also 400 command points for Mr. Smog. But it's really important to mention the fact that, you know, DJ, I mean, Mr. Smog didn't lose any of these mills just yet. And all, all three of them, especially this one, is almost level 2. And DJ has only this one from the beginning. He lost all the other starting furnaces. So his furnaces are far away from hitting level 2, unlike the mills. Again, like mentioned a couple of times, level 2 resource buildings are gonna increase your command points by 25, additionally 25, and also gonna give you more resources. So there might not be a big difference now in terms of command points, but that's gonna change within the next 20 to 30 seconds. Isengard's now being able to push back the Engma player, but Engma has now also wolf packs on the field. Wolf packs are a great, if not the greatest counter to the pikemen. But as long as he has crossbowmen and or uh, Urukai on the field, he should be good to go. I mean, the plan is simple from uh, Mr. Smog. He want to make sure to kill the pikemen. This way he can, you know, obviously engage with the wolf riders afterwards. They have also black orcs coming from DJ Premier from the inn. He was able to creep the White Slayer. Um, I could, you know, I didn't see that. My bad. If a war chanted fight here between Engma and Isengard, I think in this situation the Black Orcs they should just make sure to kill this mill. Maybe even this mill. Oh, he was already able to kill this mill actually. Yes, a lot of Black Orcs on the field, and another mill has been taken down. He's looking to get the mill in the backside as well, which is unprotected. And the Black Orcs are doing work here, which is pretty nice. 
Engmar player should be able to win that fight in the middle of the map with the wolf packs and you know his uh, his extroverts on the backside. And Isengard was kind of fully committing to that fight as well with the Krivain to debuff the enemy units. But during all this time, making sure to kill plenty of mills pretty much for free is always nice. So Mr. Lo Mr. Smog lost three of his mills to one battalion of Black Orcs and half battalion of the Pikemen. 500 command points now for DJ Premier and 400 command points only for Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog has to make sure to keep this mill alive because that's the only mill he has from the beginning. Like, the game changed in about 30 seconds, by the way, guys. Now it looks much, much better for DJ Premier because he was just able to macro play this a little bit better than his opponent, Mr. Smog. Two power points collected almost by the Engma player, Mr. Smog, after Felwind and Warchant. 350 command points available against 525 command points available now from DJ Premier. Five power points collected almost after Warchant and Krebane. He's gonna be able to keep the, work, uh, the troll layer as well at the bottom left side. We have another white layer here protecting the second end on the map. And then we have two goblin layers at the bot side and also at the top side. And black oryx, I like to see them because they are more cost efficient than Urukai. They are almost as powerful as Urukai, but it looks like Engma player will be able to capture that. And he will get the chance to get those hillman units on the field from the inn. Another mill is potentially going to be taken down. No, it's going to be defended this time. He needs to trample them one more time. Mill was able to survive, but it's very low and Smog knows where it is and he will definitely try to finish it off. I mean, DJ Premier knows where it is, he will definitely try to finish it off later on. Uh, DJ is also creeping the white layer, the second one, and he actually makes sure to get a lot of creeps done here, which is giving him the power point advantage he was able to build himself. Seven power points collected after Warchant and Creebane, and only three power points collected after Felwind and Warchant. And 10 power points is always a power spike for every single faction in Rise of the Witch King. Isengard, for example, can go for the Wildman of Sunland or the Devastation. And Engma could potentially go for the White Summon, for example. Or for the for the Orc Summon, in which you can, you know, summon Gundabad Warriors. Okay, we have Work Pits level 2 now for the Work Riders. The Furnace here has been taken down. Smok is trying to stall, trying to, you know, buy, him some, buy himself some time by keeping his opponent DJ Premier busy. But DJ is attacking him from multiple sides and actually making sure to get those black orcs on the field and to use them very nicely. I think that's the last one remaining on the field because the inn now is under control from Mr. Smug. Okay, uh, for the next fight we will have Warchan and Debuff ready from DJ and Warchan and Felvent ready from Mr. Smug. Six and a half power points collected. In the worst case scenario, Smoke can always go for the Snowbind to keep one of his you know, one of his more important mills alive. In this case, we are talking about this mill, which is level 2. Um, I think using Snowbinds here would be kind of a waste, because this one is gonna be in a dangerous spot anyway. So, I can understand if you wanna use Snowbind on the Fortress, obviously, on the Hall of the Kingsman, or on the Wolf Den, or on this level 2 mill. Which is being under attack right now, and Smog has to make sure to protect that, by the way. He's gonna commit to that fight, by the way. Felvin is being used to knock them on the ground. They are also war chanted, and Debuff is flying around as well, so technically the army from DJ Premier is stronger. Not only that, but it looks like he's gonna. Uh, never mind, I was expecting some, Gun some Wildman of Dunland summon, but this is not being the case. DJ was also using the Devastation now to get some more money. We have Lourdes already joining the battlefield, and I think the money he was just getting from the Devastation was invested into Sharku. 700 command points collected by DJ Premier. We have Waldo on the field now for the leadership part. Leadership is gonna be active until Krivain is gonna be available, which is gonna, you know, nullify the leadership also from Waldo. 650 command points by Isengard, 450 command points by Engma. 10 power points almost collected, and 10 power points again can be a power spike. Let's see how well he's gonna use it. I'm in a situation like this, I'm not a big fan of the Gundabad summon because there are work riders around. And you know, Wildman of Dunlan summon, but also Orc summon are very vulnerable against Cav. And if they can trample you down one time, you're gonna lose every single one of them, and the 10 power points would be wasted. Colois, thank you so much for the follow, and welcome to this stream of you, and enjoy your stay. 
He's gonna go for the Orc Summon indeed, and I don't know about that, because Warchan is on cooldown. We have also Sharko on the field now, who deals an incredible amount of splash damage. Uh, Waldo is level 2.5. Uh, with level 3 he will be unlocking the Pillage, which is gonna be needed now for Mr. Smog. Okay, nice trample here. Waldo is hitting level 3 now. He has to be careful, by the way, because Lourdes is here. Level almost 3 and using the Carnage. Killing those Trailmaster units, no big deal. One-shotting them, actually, with the Carnage. And now... Oh, that's what I mean, by the way. Waldo is also gonna be in a... In a... In trouble, because there is no backup. Charku is gonna be able to finish him off, hitting level 3. And that was a loose, loose situation for Mr. Smog right there. And that's why I'm not a big fan of this Orc Summon. I mean, I can understand if you have a Warchan and if you know there is no enemy calf, but he had enough uh, Warcriders around and he has also Sharko on the field, who is the hero of the Warcriders. And Orc Summon did absolutely nothing, but was just giving experience and power points to his opponent. I mean, that's not true because you can't get power points from killing the summoned units, but you know, you obviously wasted 10 of your power points for this, um, for this Orc Summon. They have also uh, some Hillman rebels here. There are pretty much the Whitemen of Dunland. They have also, you know, purchased the torches, which will make them deal more damage to the to the resource buildings. Uh, and actually, they are dealing a lot of damage to the resource buildings. And they also act now like a Trailmaster unit, by the way. You can see that yourself. They have a Trailmaster in the backside. I think that's one of the changes of the version 8.4. Okay, the commitment now. Uh, he doesn't have Snowbind. He's like three power points away from that. There is no way he can keep this Hall of the Kingsman alive. Hall of the Kingsman is one of the more tankier resource building, I mean production buildings in the game. So it's a bit harder to take down. But there is just too much to handle for uh, Engma player. And Lourdes is level three and a half. Level five will be unlocking the leadership. And again, Engma faction doesn't have a leadership nullifying effect like Isengard does. For that, you need to get Sorcerers on the field, or you need to get um, uh, even the Witch King on the field. That's all you can do against leadership from the enemy. That's why leadership against Engma is so valuable, because there is no way you can counter that. And also, Engma, one of the, the only faction in the game, actually, that doesn't have a fear resistant. So that's why fear effects against Engma are also very, very important and nice to have. I mean, Isengard obviously doesn't have fear. But factions like Mordor or Men of the West, they can actually do just great against Engma in those long extended fights where fear is not counterable from Engma faction. And DJ Premier, guys, is also coming in clutch in the game number three. You know, Mr. Smoke is kind of surrounded now from DJ, losing every single resource building and production building at the same time. Volde is back in the business. Level four is almost unlocked. Level five will be needed, obviously. Yes, enough power points for the Snowbind, let me check. No, he doesn't. He doesn't even have Snowbind yet. So he can't even save the Fortress, which is actually taking a lot of damage from the Urukai and the Black Orcs. Look at this. The Black Orcs and Urukai are dealing tons of damage. Obviously, Lourdes is helping out as well. Carnage is on cooldown. Everything is falling apart. Events even for the Dire Wolf expansion. But that's not gonna be enough. And the game is gonna be over. Incredible performance once again from DJ. Increasing. It's now my turn to win. The matchup is gonna be goblins against dwarves. And two of these factions, we have not seen them one time so far in the best of nine series, by the way. On the left side, we have the purple goblin player DJ Premier against the orange dwarf player Mr. Smug. The first time we see dwarves, the first time we see goblins in this best of nine series. Pretty nice. I like it. Two, um, two of these mineshafts into the Hall of the Warriors. On the other side, we have two tunnels into the Goblin Cave. All in edit is pretty much like a different layout for Forts of Ice. We have the same creeps, the same amount of creeps, and the same type of creeps. It's a matchup. Um, I think it's a matchup of the mobility. Like dwarves, they like to pressure you from the beginning of the game. And the plan of the dwarven faction is to actually attack you early on. With the strong units you have. I mean, Guardians are pretty strong. The Palanxes are pretty strong. The Battle Wagon leadership. I mean, you can still go for the Battle Wagon uh, with the Man of Steel upgrade on it. 
I feel like uh, the nerf from the Battle Wagon against the Pikeman doesn't matter too much in this very matchup. Because, you know, uh, Goblins, they don't go for the Pikeman immediately. For that, they need to make a Fissure, obviously. Uh, you will, by the way, the nerf, if you miss that one, the nerf to the Battle Wagons with the Man of Steel in the current patch 2.02 version 8.4 8 is that the Man of Steel on top of these Battle Wagons are dealing 75% less damage to the Pikemen. So that pretty much means you will deal zero damage to the half total pikemen from the goblins. But you can still snipe down the spiderlings, you can still snipe down some spider riders, goblin warriors, obviously you can still trample them down. So I wouldn't say they are useless in this matchup. The builder here has to be very careful, by the way. The goblin warriors are faster than the builder. Oh, okay. He was, was he able to see the creep here, by the way? Can't tell you. I think he was not able to see that. Right, it looks like you want to take down the mineshaft. He has guardians inside of that. He might try to defend this one. I think that's going to be also his plan. But the creep is going to be secured by the dwarf weapon player, Mr. Smog, anyway. He will also be able to capture this in afterwards. Thresher on the ground. The mineshaft has been taken down already. The thresher is going to be secured by Mr. Smog. After capturing this in, he will get the chance to recruit some, you know, filthy hobbitses, as Gollum would like to call them. From the inn at the top right side. Also, the best one of the best units you can actually recruit from the inn. Uh, from all factions, they are very cost efficient, pretty strong against anything. They cost 200 resources each. Okay, um, they, you, they used to cost 150 if I'm not mistaken, so they got also changed in this patch 2.02 version 8.4. Okay, we have a Forge Works coming up now. There is a mineshaft at the bottom left side, and he's going for an attack with one Guardian only. Rallying Coal is available, but so is the War Chant. It looks like Goblin Player is going for attack as well. We have a lot of Goblin Warriors. We have Triple Goblin Cave, and now he's building up the Spider Pit. In this Spider Pit can actually be very nice in this in this matchup as well, because Spider Links are a great counter to the Battle Wagons. You can outrun them, you can catch them, and you can take them down quite fast. Now, it, in this case, we are not talking about the hard counter, in which in like every situation, one spiderling is gonna be able to kill a battle wagon. With the battle wagon, you can still kite them quite nicely. And with the man of steel on top of the battle wagon, you can shoot them while you are moving. And this way, it's kind of hard to engage on you. But we also need to keep in mind that the spiderlings they cost only 300 each, but the battle wagons they cost 500 each. But that's a massive attack from DJ now. Mineshaft has been taken down already. He has to get the battle wagon on the field pretty much now. But imagine him losing the forge works before that happens. If he clumps very nicely, he can definitely take down the second mineshaft as well. And I think that's gonna be his plan. If he takes down the second mineshaft here, which is the main mineshaft of the Dwarven player, that's gonna be huge. During all this time, he was also able to defend himself quite nicely. He lost only one tunnel, which is not the end of the world, and he will be able to defend himself. Another tunnel has been taken down, which was further away from the fortress. But the mineshaft, and that's the important thing, in between the two production buildings, has been taken down. The war channel buff is now gone. What? What was that? Guys, did you see that? Some Illuminati stuff happened. The battle wagon was here and then it disappeared again. What? I mean, this game is surprising me every single time. Because every single time we are seeing stuff we have not seen before. That's why we love Rise of the Witch King, boys. Alrighty. Boil him, mash him, stick him in a stove, through that. <laughs> the Hobbitses. Okay, the mineshaft here is being the target, but it looks like um, Mr. Smok is going to defend that with the battle wagon. He's going for the banner carry upgrade, which is going to be the leadership for the army here. I mean, Goblin player can always go for the cave pads, and he's really close for that. Cave pads in this situation are going to be very important. Otherwise, you won't be able to fight the enemy, enemy units. Guardians are stronger in a 1v1 situation than Spiderlings, but also against the Goblin Warriors. And with the leadership they will have now, they will be very devastating. A small group of units can actually take down a big army from the Goblins. That's why you will definitely need the cave pads in this situation when you want to fight against the enemy units. Okay, uh, he's almost there. He has almost the power points he needs. Five power points are needed for that. He's gonna get them during the fight. Battle Wagon can go for a trample. Oil Bottle will be used. Five power points collected now. He needs to pick the cave pads really fast. Which will be chosen now. 
but the tunnel has been taken down already. During all this time, he was also able to capture this inn. That means uh, Mr. Smog won't be able to make any more hobbits from the inn at the top right side. Remember, there is not enough defense around this side. He can always use the mineshaft and get actually back to his own side of the map in order to defend himself. It looks like also that's the plan from Mr. Smug. But that's a smart move from DJ. He's gonna force his opponent to make a choice. Will you defend this mineshaft or will you try to defend your outpost here? And it looks like Smug is gonna be forced to give this up. And, you know, fighting this might be tricky because you don't wanna be surrounded in this situation and smart move from Smug not you know fight for this mineshaft 525 command points collected for the goblins we have 350 command points only collected for mr smog mr smog is really behind also in the game number five against dg premier that's why he has to get something from the map he has to creep he has to get some money and also power points elsewhere until he has the power he needs until he has the army he needs in order to fight against the goblins not only that but also to deal the damage he's looking for because in an all-out in, in, in all fight right now, the goblin players are a lot of units on the field. You will have the Keef Bats, which is going to shut down the leadership from the battle wagon. You will have the Warchan. You will have your Rallying Call. But the debuff, after nullifying the leadership, is going to be superior. It's going to be stronger, obviously. And yeah, the Dwarven units are still stronger in a 1v1 situation. But the 1v1 situation is not existing anymore. It's a 1v3 situation, you know, in the best case, for the Dwarven player. So he has to play, you know, very nicely and has, he has to position himself quite nicely as well. I think he will need extroverts potentially to back up the main army guardians in the front line. And, or he will need much more guardians on the field than he has now. The mineshaft here is going to be taken down next. Oil barrel is being used. And he's going to commit now. Smoke is going to decide to fight that. But remember, Keith Bats are available for the Goblin player DJ Premier. He can always use them. The fire on the ground is doing a great job, though. Polar Bears 90, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Alright, the fight is continuing, but the Keith Bats are coming in clutch. The Battle Wagon can't really engage because there are some Spiderlings around, you wanna avoid them. They are dealing a lot of damage to the Battle Wagons. That's why you should not try to trample, because while you are trampling, you, got, you are getting slowed down, and that's going to give the spiderlings the time they need to take you down. 3 power points almost collected. After the Keith Pets and Warchant, 700 command points are available. 500 command points are available for Mr. Smog. 4 power points almost collected after the heal and rallying call. Heal was forced to be used defensively around this side. And I think Mr. Smog is in a situation now in which he doesn't want to be, because Dwarven... Gameplay requires you to play much more offensively, but if we take a look into the minimap right now, we can see Smog is being surrounded already. Like, there are tunnels at the bottom side, there are tunnels at the middle, there are tunnels at the top side. The inn at the top right side is also under control from DJ Premier. And DJ is popping off with every single faction. Spider Pit level 2, by the way, for the Spider Riders. Fissure is on the field, 3 Goblin Caves. What more do you need to win the game number 5? The tunnel has been taken down. We know Smog is a fighter. He's gonna fight until the very end. He's gonna hope and rely on the mistakes from DJ. And one big mistake can turn the game around. But in this situation, it's gonna be very difficult for Mr. Smog to actually be able to push back the Goblin player DJ Premier. Because he has such a big unit advantage now. And he's fighting there without the battle wagon. And look at the units he has on the field. Like, he has a lot, and this is not gonna be, you know, this is not gonna get any better for Mr. Smog, because he has five production buildings now, against only two. And Smog is also short on money, and short on the command points he has under his control. 166 out of 550, 680 out of 700. That's how much more units DJ has on the field now. He has collected 10, almost 10 power points, by the way, after the gift bats as well. And, uh, you know, after the cave pads, he can obviously go for the Spider Alliance Summon, which will give him the damage he needs to burst down those production buildings and also resource buildings quite fast. The Corsars are slowly but surely taking down one of the mineshafts. Another one has been taken down. Smog is gonna lose now a lot of his command points. He is very short on money, building another production building, but he has not the money to keep spamming every single one of them. 
And look at the army from DJ Premier here. Another mineshaft is gonna be taken down and Smok has literally almost zero units on the field now. Okay. Let's see. The mineshaft here has been taken down. Almost 8 power points collected after the heal and rallying call. And they have 11 power points collected now. You can also go for the Waldman of Dunland Summon, by the way, which can be in a situation like this potentially even better. Because there is only one battle wagon. And I think that's not gonna be enough. After all, Swartman are joining the battlefield as well. Look how much map control he has. He has almost full command points, by the way, with only one barrow expansion around the fortress. He has enough for the Wildman, he has enough for the spiders. But does he even need them? He's gonna go for the Wildman of Dunland, which will be used now, and I think it's gonna be a big Warchan play now. There we go. Battle Wagon can't deal with that all alone. That's not possible. The leadership is gonna get negated. Battle Wagon is getting Bury States down. And with this army, he can even commit to the fortress, which is not gonna be needed. Smok is calling it GG. And once again, uh, incredibly. An incredible performance from, from DJ the winner bracket. He won the winner brackets final, and this is the way he was entering the grand finals, while DJ was coming from the losers bracket. With that being said, if DJ wins the best of nine series against Mr. Smog, Mr. Smog will have another chance to play another best of nine series against DJ Premier. So DJ has to win against Mr. Smog two best of nine series because this is double elimination tournament. Just for your information, guys, and chat and YouTube. <laughs> On the left side, we have the purple goblin player DJ Premier against the orange Mordor player Mr. Smog. And this is a good matchup for Mordor, in my opinion. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because Mordor's orc buff is coming in clutch in this matchup. Orcs now are way harder to deal for the goblins than they were before in the version 8.3. And also trolls can be still viable option against the goblins because they struggle to deal with them early on. All right, we have three slaughterhouses, orc pit into the second orc pit. We have two tunnels, three tunnels, goblin cave into the second goblin cave. Warchan has been chosen by the model player Mr. Smok. And DJ Premier didn't pick anything just yet. DJ can also go for the cave bats to kind of blind counter the enemy Eye of Sauron with the goblin faction. But if he does that, it's gonna be actually a bad thing for DJ because Warchan is better. Even, even with the debuff, the, you know, the units from Mr. Smog with the Warchan are gonna be stronger than they would normally be. Because the 50-50% increased damage and armor is actually very effects, impactful. It's, you know, from the early until the very end, very late game. Okay, so we have Oryx, 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 three Orc pets now. Two goblin caves and i think we might see more goblin caves and even more orc pits in a 1v1 situation it's gonna be still slightly in favor of the goblin warriors which makes also sense they cost a little bit more than the orcs but it's not gonna be one-sided at all it's gonna be very very close fight oh my god mr smog has to be careful here mr smog is taking a lot of damage the poison damage should not be enough to finish off the builder and he's just being able to get away okay so two goblin caves into the third goblin cave. We have already three orc pits up on the field for Mr. Smug. Beautiful. Five power points. He didn't pick anything just yet. Warchan is still available for uh, Mr. Smug for his orcs. But Smug is now playing a little bit more defensively, which makes sense. And that's something you can always do with the Moro faction against goblins. You can always place your orcs right in front of the slaughterhouses. Try to body block. And, you know, one goblin warrior all alone is gonna need a bit more time to finish off your slaughterhouse. That's why I think DJ has to make sure to not split them. But, you know, getting them low now, being able to finish them off later on is always a viable option as well. Alright, DJ still, you know, couldn't decide what, you know, what he wanna pick first. Troll Kish is coming up now after three orc pets. Again, Mountain Trolls, even with the nerf, I think they are still a great choice against the Goblins early on. They will, you know, be very good against Goblin Spam, defending against Goblin Spam, being able to take down the enemy tunnels from a safe distance with the rocks. And even Spiderlings gonna struggle to deal with them. Also, Half-Troll Swordsmen are gonna struggle to deal with them. So only Half-Troll Pikemen 
are the only units pretty much that can fight them in a 1v1 situation. That's why when we see Mordor getting mountain trolls on the field, I think the best counter the goblin player can get are his own trolls from the fissure level 2. Cave trolls, and I think that's the plan also from DJ Premier. He's going for the level 2 upgrade immediately for the cave trolls. Commitment on the tunnel, but I think that's not gonna be enough to finish it off, and that will be defended by DJ Premier. The slaughterhouse here might be taken down. There are a lot of units from the model player, Mr. Smog. They are not doing anything. And I think if he doesn't pay attention, oh, never mind, it's gonna be protected for now. Alright, Troll Cage, the first mountain troll, is not being able to join the battlefield because Mr. Smog is command points kept. They cost now more command points, by the way, but orcs cost less command points now. So the amount of command points that Mountain Troll costs more is kind of getting kind of getting balanced again from the orc buff in terms of damage, but also in terms of command points. They cost now less command points. That also means with lower command points, you are able to make more units. They cost 30 command points, and they also cost only 80, 80 resources. Goblin Warriors, they cost 100 command points. I mean... 100 resources and 40 command points. Okay. He's gonna be able to creep the work layer at the bottom right side. This tunnel here might be taken down. Warchan has been used from uh, DJ Premier defensively, by the way. Which is always a great thing for a model player. And he will be able to uh, destroy this tunnel. Pretty nice. We have the first troll joining the battlefields now. And the first cave troll is gonna join the battlefield next. But Smok is being able to creep multiple work layers at the same time. That's gonna be his second work layer, and that's gonna be his even his third work layer at the bottom left side. While the goblin player wasn't able to creep anything so far just yet. The amount of creeps Smok is pretty much taking for free are gonna give him the power points he needs. But remember, he was starting with the war chant. But with that being said, he won't be able to go for the industry after the war chan with 10 power points. He needs to pick I and then collect 10 power points afterwards. The slaughterhouse should be protected. The troll and one of the most important tunnels from DJ is gonna be taken down. And actually quite funny that we have seen so many times Mordor faction in this random mirror grand finals. The first game was a Mordor Mirror, the third game was Mordor against Isengard, now we see Mordor once again. Like four times out of six games, if we see Mordor as the faction in the finals. Okay, uh, Goblin player is only sitting on 450 command points by the way. So he's really low on money and also on command points, against 550 command points by Smok, who has almost 10 power points collected. Command points are rising. And Smog also didn't choose the Eye of Sauron just yet. I think Eye of Sauron can be a great choice, because it can give you the double buff advantage you need. And you might not need it now, but I think it can be you know, very useful later on, and especially because of the industry you can go for. The builder from DJ has to be careful. The tunnel in the front side is gonna be taken down next, and you know, you will need multiple goblin archers, I think, to deal with this troll. The find an orc to eat ability has been nerfed, so you can't eat permanently and, you know, repeatedly again and again and again. You have to wait 30 seconds after eating one of these. Okay. And he went for the Eye of Sauron now, which is being used, but the key pads from the goblin player are gonna nullify the leadership from the Eye of Sauron anyway. The mountain troll from Mr. Smok is gonna be taken down next. This troll is trying to make it into the backline. We are also getting orc arches now. And unlike, uh, unlike the Mountain Troll, the Cave Troll can't eat an Orc and heal up. He needs to get level 2 or level 3 for that, for the self-regeneration. Um, they also cost the same amount of command points, by the way. 60 command points for the Cave Troll, but also 60 command points for the Mountain Troll. Also the same resources, 500 for each of them. But remember, for the Cave Trolls, you need to get your Fissure to level 2 first. And you can make the Mountain Trolls from the level 1 Troll Cage. Okay? Um, obviously the best trolls are still the attack trolls, and I think when you see your opponent, the goblin player, making a lot of these cave trolls, attack trolls might be the way to go, because once they are level 2, you can use the dominate troll ability and keep stealing the trolls from your opponent all the time. Okay, we have a fight here in the middle of the map, Warchan has been used from both the players, 
The trolls are diving in. This one has a tree in his hands. Two trolls against two trolls. But nice positioning here from DJ Premier. One of the mountain trolls has been taken down already. And the other one is level almost 3. And they are both going to be able to survive. More the player is now being able to push back. But so far he was already losing 3 trolls. And losing them is going to hurt you. But on the bright side for Mr. Smog, he has almost 10 power points collected. And he will potentially go for the industry to get even more resources. Goblin player on the other side has 525 command points collected. He's playing with 3 goblin caves, a fissure level 2. No spider pit so far. Industry has been used already now. On the slaughterhouse in the front side. Which is risky in my opinion. Maybe you should try to use it on the one in the back side. Or this one on the right side. Maybe he didn't want to use it on this one because it's already a little bit damaged. He wanted to use it on, a one, on one of them which is 100% health so far. Okay. Uh, the troll here from DJ Premier is going to be taken down potentially. He's quite tanky though. The orcs, they should be able to finish him off. That's unfortunate because he was level 3. This one is level 2. Goblin troll is going to get this fear effect on the enemy units. And he's going to keep doing that. Unlike the find an orc to eat ability, the goblin troll has no cooldown. So you can keep using it all the time. Oh, oh my god, that was close. You can see the amount of regeneration you're getting from the eat is not that much anymore. And it goes on cooldown as well. Now he has to wait 30 more seconds in order to use it again. You have two trolls here from DJ Premier not doing much. This tunnel here is almost down. And the Oryx, they should be able to finish, finish it off. Alright. This tunnel in the front side is going to be taken down next. Pretty nice. And Smok is now actually punishing his opponents big time. Another tunnel has been taken on at the bottom left side. So he keeps killing those tunnels. He will be even able to take down one of the builders from DJ Premier. DJ Premier is now falling apart. He has 10 power points collected. Might be forced to go for the Spider Ally Summon. He's gonna go for the Whiteman of Dunlin and use it defensively. I think that's the worst case scenario. When you are forced to use such an ability which you would need normally to deal the damage to the economy of Mordor you need. When you are forced to use it defensively like this, it's a win-win situation for the Mordor player Mr. Smug. Because ideally, he, would, should, he should be using the Spider Allies offensively in order, to take, in order to take down this level 3 slaughterhouse, which is with the industry buff. And if this is not enough, we have Kamul joining the battlefield, guys. From the fortress for Mr. Smug. A fell beast is here. And they are clumped. Oh, he should have attacked this one. DJ is gonna call it GG after seeing the Fell Beast. And Smog is gonna say, I am still alive. I am not defeated yet. The score is gonna be 4 to meet the spec on the menu, boys. Exactly. At the top side, we have the purple Elven player DJ Premier against the orange Isengard player Mr. Smog, who was able to win the previous game with the Mordor faction against goblins on the map Westfold. Now he gets to play the Isengard faction on the map Sorrow Isles. And the Alvin player DJ Premier having an incredible performance so far. Uh, leading the series 4-2 is one win away from, you know, deciding the first best of 9 series against Mr. Smog for himself. But again, in order to be the world champion, DJ has to defeat Mr. Smog in two best of 9s. Two Malone trees into the barracks. Into the third Malone tree. You have two furnaces into the Uruk pit. Into the third furnace. Uh, Warchan has been chosen, and Rallying Coal is gonna be also the choice from DJ Premier. Um, that's a normal start from both the players, by the way. Nothing too crazy, nothing too spicy. Uh, two furnaces, two resource buildings into the barracks is like the normal and safe start. We have Lorian Warriors first, Urukai. No, we're gonna have the Pikeman first actually. He might go for the creep. You can always creep the goblin layer here, but for that you don't need to make you don't need to make pikeman. When we see someone making pikeman, he might potentially go for the troll layer. And that's already the waypoint he was setting from the Uruk pit. When I click on the Uruk pit, I can see the Urukai are gonna go to this troll creep at the right side of the map. I think he's gonna also creep with the help of the builder. So this, the idea is simple, you want to lure the troll away from the lair with the help of the builder and as the troll is going back, he wants to be able to attack you, this way you can burst him down 
without taking any kind of damage. Lorien warriors are moving forwards now from the barracks and the archers are gonna be the second unit. We will have crossbowmen for defense. Um, I think they won't be out in time, so he might lose the furnace here in the front side. Especially when he, when, you know, the Alvin player is gonna use his rallying call offensively, he will definitely be able to take down this furnace here. Okay, actually he is not creeping with the help of the builder, but he is, you know, luring the troll away from the lair regardless. And as he's going back, he wants to be able to attack you, this way you can, you know, creep much, much easier. The pikeman. Okay, the furnace here has been demolished by Mr. Smog. Doesn't want to give his opponent any kind of power points. Um, Crossbowmen are chasing down those Lorien warriors. And we will have Urukai for the third unit from the barracks. Okay, archers are in position for defense. Uh, Lorien warriors next. Rallying Cole and Warchan are still available from both the players. Smog was, yeah, Smog was able to demolish one of his furnaces, but remember was also able to get one of the troll layers which was giving him a lot of money all right team so rallying call and war chant 350 command points for isengard 400 command points for elves okay it looks like you know dj is looking for a chance to sneak the slorian warriors potentially to the backside here yeah that's gonna be his plan might be able to see this furnace and potentially take it down, but remember there are crossbow men in position and ready to defend. Isengard's player was also able to see that. By the way, with, by the way, with Isengard, you can always buy the cave pads upgrade on to, on top of the fortress, which is gonna give you a lot of vision control. Maybe not too much necessary against elves, but against factions like dwarves or goblins, I think it's gonna be very important to have it. This way you can actually see those tunnels and mine shafts much much earlier. But Isengard is going for an attack now with Urukai and Pikeman level 2. We have archers in position, but the slaughterhouse here, I mean, the Malon tree here is gonna be taken down first. He's also gonna use the war chant for that. It looks like DJ is gonna use the rallying call defensively. The pikemen are dying quite fast against the archers, even though they are level 2, but pikemen are, you know, much more vulnerable against archers than other units. The Urukai, they are a bit harder to take down, but I think that should be more than enough. He has two archers after all with the with the buff of the rallying goal. And also the fortress is shooting them down. In this way, Smog should not be able to take down the second. The Lancers are not gonna be needed in this situation. And the second Malon tree is gonna be able to survive. And that is Sharku. And Sharku is one of the greatest heroes and counters against the Elven faction. We have seen Sharku. Being the MVP in this Elves against Isengard matches, in which he was single-handedly able to take down the entire Elven Archer army himself. That's why DJ now has to make sure to survive and to pay attention. Charku is only killable from Pikeman. Because he's a mounted hero, he is taking reduced damage from the Archer, so you will need thousands of Archers to shoot him down in order to take him down, especially the normal Lorian Archers. They will need a lot of time to take him down. But the lenses from DJ are doing a great job. And they will be able to take down one of the furnaces. And he keeps making more lancers. I like to see that. Uh, by the way, Sharku is also a great counter to the lancers. So you can chase them down. You can one-shot them pretty much easily. And once Sharku is level 7 with the Mana Eater, he will get 100% increased armor. That's gonna make him really hard to take down. And he will also be able to deal 50% damage. And also on top of that, you are regenerating a lot of health. So when you are like at 10% health, you use that. You get full health again. And then you can keep fighting with, you know, with a better and improved Charku. With more damage and armor. Which is pretty nice. Uh, hasn't seen the donation yet? What kind of donation? I missed the donation? In this case, it's my bad. Because the donation to the charity, you mean, right? I couldn't see the donation because the donation is not linked to my own donation. It's like a direct link to the to the website. It goes directly to the charity. But I will check the message afterwards. MQS, sorry my friend. I was not paying attention. Alrighty. Okay. Charku is here. The rampage you are looking for is gonna be now, my friend. 
Ooh, look how scared DJP has to be. Oh, but he needs to be careful now. This is randomized, by the way. Sometimes you are trampling on top of, you know, over the over the pikemen. You don't take damage. Sometimes they touch you, you die. Like, this is kind of randomized. But I like the way DJ is playing that. DJ is like playing it very smartly, very patiently and quite smart. He splits the fight in multiple pathways. Like, he is not being the normal Elven player we have to we had we got to see so many times during this tournament. Elves normally they like to group all the units together and they wanna go for a clumped attack. But I like the way DJ is playing the Elven faction. He's splitting his units. He's splitting his pike, uh, you know, horses. That's something I love to see in this game. Because most of the time we see the players are grouping all their calf together. Like five battalions of Lancers moving together. But that is not necessary. You can actually move them one by one. And they will deal enough damage to take down those furnaces level 1 and level 2. And this makes Sharku not being that impactful anymore. So gotta give credits here in this situation to DJ Premier. And look at this. He keeps up the pressure all the time. And he will be able to take down the last level 2 furnace here from Mr. Smog. Smoky is dropping down to 300 command points. His command points capped right now. 625 command points on the other side from DJ Premier. And if you are afraid of Sharku, you should also be afraid of Glorfindel. Especially in a situation like this. This guy has also splashed damage chat. And if he catches you in a situation like this, he will level up like crazy. If he levels up like crazy, he will unlock his Blade of Purity. If he unlocks that, he will be hitting like an absolute truck. He will demolish your army. He will be very tanky, even though he got nerfed this patch. The Blade of Purity's armor buff from 100% got reduced to 50. But trust me, he is still one of the best heroes in the game. The Malon tree here is gonna be taken down next. I mean, Smok was trying to deal some damage in return, but he had to deal with the pikemen here first. Because now Smok has only 450 command points, and it's gonna be coming in only 400 now, because this furnace here in the meantime is gonna be taken down as well. Sharku is almost level 4. And I don't know if Smog can back, you know, come back from this situation, but it's gonna be a tough one, trust me on that. We will need a hero move from Sharku. Sharku has to be the MVP once again. All the hope of Middle-earth, <laughs> all the hope of Saruman lies in Sharku. He was able to kill, almost kill Aragorn in the movies after all. Maybe he can do that here as well. But he has to avoid, avoid those pikemen. I like the moves here from DJ. Like, he's playing very smart. He knows what the units, what the hero can do. He knows his weaknesses. He knows, you know, where he needs to avoid fighting him. And that's a perfect example. There is not a single OP unit if you know how to deal with that. And very well here, Dan. Look at this. He's just making pikemen. And there is nothing he can do. Like, nothing he can do. The Kribane was used too early, and it will be taken down by the archers. The debuff is gone now. And Mist is gonna be used. Mist, get, Mist can't be killed, unlike Kribane. The debuff is active. Ooh! Ooh, chat! Oh my goodness! Where is the army gone from Isengard? Now you see it, now you don't. Blade of Purity is being used, everything is falling apart. DJ Premier, ladies and gentlemen, is shining bright like a diamond. And he is gonna even commit to the fortress. And what an incredible performance, by the way, from DJ. Yes, Mr. Smog is not defeated just yet. Because Mr. Smog was undefeated until now. And this is a double elimination tournament. So Mr. Smog has a second chance. And yes, DJ has to win against Mr. Smog one more time in the best of nine. True. And when it's gonna happen, I don't know. I will guys keep you guys up to date via Discord and YouTube and stuff like this. Um, but if Mr. Smog doesn't improve his gameplay and if DJ is popping off like this one more time in the best of nine, there is a high chance that he will be the world champion of 2020. And Smog is offering him to make another best of nine now. 
I'm up to it if they want to, but I don't think this is gonna be possible now. The first best of nine series.